dear students in the last session we discussed about hypothesis testing using z test that is for one example right so in today's session we will discuss about hypothesis testing using t test or t distribution okay so before moving on to the problem let me tell you what you mean by t distribution or it is also called as student distribution okay it is actually used for estimating the population mean when n is less than 30 that is for small sample size and population standard deviation is unknown okay so whenever you get a particular question and once you um, examine the sample size if it is less than 30 you need to understand that it is t distribution if it is greater than 30 definitely you need to go for no i mean is a test okay or is a distribution so the first thing is to understand what is a sample size if it is less than 30 it is t distribution okay so this t distribution is also called student distribution you will have t distribution table and it is available in the back side of a logarithm book just like how we have discussed with a z table uh, that is normal distribution table similarly you have another page for t distribution as well now t distribution is a symmetric distribution just like the normal distribution but a little uh, bit flatter than the normal curve it is also same way like a bell shaped curve but little more flatter okay than the normal distribution and it is again symmetric okay and it is highly dependent on sample size which is depicted in terms of degree of freedom here the sample size is depicted in terms of degree of freedom in most of the question uh, it will be given a sample size only then we will have to find the degree of freedom how do we find degree of free freedom degree of freedom is actually n minus 1 that is degree of freedom is the number of values we can choose freely so here we can calculate degree of freedom with this formula that is n minus 1 if the sample size n is given then degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1 then in t distribution table it gives the combined area outside the confidence interval just like how i told before this is a t distribution okay just like normal distribution it is a symmetric curve but it is little more flatter than the normal curve so it is bisecting this mu value is bisecting this particular curve okay so as you all know here you have lcl and ucl so acceptance region will be between lcl and ucl anything which comes in between lcl and ucl that is called the acceptance region so outside that that is something which lies um, you know below lcl and something which lies above ucl that part is called the tail region or the rejection region okay so actually t distribution table is giving the combined area of this tail region okay so in z curve we have seen in z distribution we have seen that it is giving half the area that is from the mean how much is the area that is what is given by the z table right but here in case of t table it gives the combined area of these two tails okay so once you uh, know the z i mean t value how you will calculate ucl the formula is ucl is equal to mu plus t into sigma x sigma x is the uh, standard error okay and lcl is equal to mu minus t into sigma x here mu is the sample mean which is assumed to be the population mean also and t is the number of standard errors from the mean and z i mean sigma x is the size of the standard error okay now we will discuss a particular problem in order to understand the t distribution better okay so we will solve a hypothesis testing uh, using t test and now look at this problem in this particular problem we have Infosys is recruiting large number of MBA graduates from college ABC for an overseas assignment the HR manager feels that the average score of the aptitude test will be around 90 when 20 of the test results were reviewed by the hr head the mean score was found to be 84 and the standard deviation of the score is 11 so the hr head wants to test the hr, uh, HR manager's hypothesis at 0 0.10 level of significance so now what is given in the question infosys is recruiting mba graduates from a college abc 
okay for an overseas assignment now what happened is hr manager is feeling that the average score of the aptitude test will be around 90 so we actually don't know what is the exact population of the students in that particular college okay that population size is not given but the hr manager is feeling that all the students who are writing that particular aptitude test they will be scoring uh, an average of 90 marks fine so when 20 of the test results were reviewed by the hr head now hr head is reviewing he is taking randomly taking 20 results and when he reviewed that the mean score was found to be 84 it is it was not 90 it was 84 now and the standard deviation is also given as 11 standard deviation is 11 and the mean was found to be 84 now hr head wants to find whether the assumption of HR manager is right or wrong. So this is a question. So now in case of hypothesis testing question, the first thing that we need to do is we need to formulate the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. That is the first step. So what can be the null hypothesis? So the null hypothesis is here the HR head wants to uh, test whether HR manager's assumption is right. What is HR manager's assumption? His assumption is that the average score is 90. So H0 you can write it as mu is equal to 90. Why mu is equal to 90? The average score is assumed to be 90. That is what the HR manager is assuming, right? So this is our H0 or null hypothesis. So when this is a H0, what can be H1? H1 will be mu not equal to 90. Now, why mu not equal to 90? He want to test it is actually 90 or not. If it is going below 90 or if it is going above 90, then the null hypothesis will be rejected. Correct? So, here this is a two-tailed test. Why it is a two-tailed test? Both the tails are open here. Even if it is going below uh, I mean below 90 also it will go to the rejection region if it is above 90 also it will go to the rejection region fine so here h1 is it is not equal to 90 that is the alternate hypothesis and this test is a two-tailed test so you, so you can write this is a two-tailed test okay now for the next thing that you need to do is you need to write down what all is given in the particular question now what all is given in the question here we have the hr manager feels that the average score of the aptitude test will be around 90 so we have assumed this then 20 of the test results were reviewed so here 20 is given what is 20 20 is small letter n that is the sample size is 20 right then we, uh, it was reviewed and the mean score was found to be 84 what is 84 84 is the sample mean right so here the sample mean sample mean is equal to that is given as x x is equal to 84 fine then standard deviation is given standard deviation sigma is given as 11 correct so these many things are given and one more thing is there mm -hmm. that is hr manager's hypothesis we need to test at point one zero level of significance so the alpha value is also given that is significant level level of significance is equal to point one zero what does that mean so when it is alpha is equal to point one zero that means confidence level will be 90 percentage or point nine zero but here we need not take confidence level why i'll tell you here this is n is equal to 20 20 is less than 30 right so in t distribution we discussed that if the sample size is less than 30 then we'll have to go for what t test since n is equal to 20 we will have to go for t test so we have identified the test if it was greater than 30 then definitely we'll be going for the z test or the normal distribution this is t test why because the sample size is very low okay so this is it so these are the things given in the question now let's see how we will solve the question so we have our sample size as 20 so we identified that it is the t test and uh, we have our uh, significant uh, sorry significant level as point 
level of significance is 0 0.10 then standard deviation is 11 and sample mean is 84 correct so we need to find out the t value how do you find the t value now we need one more additional information that we can calculate now we have identified that this is t test so the next thing that you need to do is you need to find degree of freedom how do you find degree of freedom what is the formula degree of freedom degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1 that is the formula degree of freedom is n minus 1 so n is 20 so 20 minus 1 you have degree of freedom as 90 okay now you need to take the t table for calculating t value okay so we will calculate the t value so t value is calculated in this way here we have alpha value as 0 0.10 so now you need to calculate the t value for 0 0.10 uh, under 19 degrees of freedom so under 19 degrees of freedom what is the t value for 0 0.10 okay so here we need not go for the confidence interval but we we need to go for the level of significance so alpha t value for 0 0.10 under 19 degrees of freedom so from the table we can see that the, t, the value is 1.729 Um, you can refer to the back side of the logbook in logbook you can get this value okay t table is there so you can check for 0 0.10 under 19 degrees of freedom you will get the value as 1.729 okay so you have the t value now now in case in a question of only confidence level is given definitely you need to find the alpha value if 90 percentage is a confidence level then 10 percentage will be the alpha value at 0 0.10 if it is 95 percentage confidence level then it is 0 0.05 will be the alpha value so t value for 0 0.05 under whatever be the degree of freedom from the question okay so now we have this now what is the formula for ucl and lcl See, this is the formula ucl is equal to mu plus t into sigma x okay so with that we can find out ucl is equal to mu plus t into sigma x correct so what is mu value mu is 90 90 plus t t value is 1.729 into sigma x ah, before that we need to calculate sigma x value correct so sigma x value how do we calculate here the um, what you say population size is not known to us so in that case standard error is given by sigma divided by root over of n correct so this is the uh, formula so sigma is already given in the question we know that the sigma value is 11 right we have found out this is already given in the question sigma value is 11 so 11 divided by root over of 20 so you will get sigma value as 2.459 okay sigma x value is equal to 2.459 this you need to calculate before calculating ucl and lcl okay so you can put this 2.459 okay so mu that is 90 plus 1.729 into 2.4 459 will give you the UCL value. On calculation, you will get the UCL value as 94.251. Okay, this is the UCL value. Then what is the LCL value? LCL is equal to mu minus t into sigma x. So you will get 90 minus 1.729 into 2.459. Okay, here also you can put the bracket. So, you will get the LCL value on calculation. You will get it as 85.749. Okay. So, this is the UCL value and this is the LCL value. Now, you need to draw the T distribution. So, T distribution definitely it is a bit flatter curve. It is flatter than the normal curve. So, you have your mu value that is mu is equal to 90. Correct. And what is your LCL value? LCL value will come here that is 85.749 and what is the UCL value? UCL value will come to the right of 90 that is 94.251 correct. 
okay so 85.749 and 94.25 this will be the acceptance region correct so now what is the sample mean according to the question see sample mean is given as 84 x is equal to 84 so where will 84 come 84 will be coming in this side right to the left of uh, ACL that is 84 will come here clear see so this is UCL and this is the acceptance region this is our x value x is equal to 84 84 is coming to the left of LCL that is in the rejection region it is not coming within the this is the acceptance region that is between LCL and UCL is your acceptance region but 84 is coming in the rejection region therefore we can say that we are rejecting the null hypothesis so finally you can write the inference like this here sample mean of 84 lies outside the confidence interval in rejection region and hence the null hypothesis H0 is rejected. The true mean score of MBA students in the aptitude test is not 90. That means HR manager's assumption is not correct. Okay. So this is the final inference. Hope you have understood this problem. Thank you.